Hi, I'm Sean O'Brien, executive producer for NBA Live. So it's been a few years since we've seen an NBA game from you guys. Can you talk about what you've been working on over the last three or four years? Well, me personally, I just came back to EA Sports in October. So I had been with uh, the franchise a long time, uh, up until about two years ago when I left EA. Andrew Wilson actually asked me to come back in September, and I joined the team down in Orlando in October. So it's been a very busy six months for us, rebuilding what is NBA Live, and our core commitment to the consumer on five-on-five -on -five gameplay, and really bringing back NBA Live to the way it was quite a long time ago. Forgetting about Gen 3 a little bit, Focus on Gen 4, the new hardware, the new opportunities to provide our consumer with a game that they can really count on. What are the opportunities that Next Gen opens up for you? I think there's many. You know, I look at it for us specifically, the, obviously the extra memory provides opportunity for more animation. Basketball games are such a heavy requirement on animation. You know, signature players having opportunities for players to play as they should be playing, teams to play as they should be playing and obviously graphic improvements. But for me personally, it's the connected experience that I'm really excited about. Our opportunity and our commitment to our consumer to provide the updates that we're gonna be providing on content, obviously with our partnership with Synergy Sports, really bringing data and tendencies from the real world into our game. Our commitment to delivering those within an hour when they actually happen in the real world something that's never been done before. So that, for me, really fires me up, maintaining relevancy throughout the course of the year. When it comes to E3, talk about what you guys are showing here. Sure, for E3 specifically, we're focused on Bounce Tech. So what we're doing, we've really looked at the category, feel like there's been some amazing innovation, I think by NBA Live over the years, especially by 2K in recent years. No one's really done dribbling well. So what we're really doing is taking uh, a lesson and a page from the FIFA book, and what they did was separate the ball from the foot. We're actually separating the ball from the hand using a technology called Bounce Tech, allowing us to have physics-based dribbling for the first time. So really offering the consumer the opportunity for full control, self-expression, creativity, to do something that they want to do on the floor, something they've never really had before. What are the, what, why is NBA, where you don't have the, the, the helmets, you don't have the face mask, such a good demonstration when it comes to next-gen technology? It's a great question. I think we're excited, personally, beyond NBA, because of the way the game is presented. You know, the way what the, what the athletes are actually wearing, their shorts, you know, sleeveless shirts, or their tattoos, their hairstyles. It's a highlight-driven sport as well, so it really gives us as game developers an opportunity to focus on player likeness, the way they move, the way they look, their facial expressions, really focusing on technology that allows us to have appropriate facial animations to really bring emotion in the game. The crowd, it's such an intimate environment, really focusing on dancers, mascots, the crowd cheering, you know, playoff crowds versus preseason crowds, and really getting that atmosphere that's so interesting about the NBA. I think that's something that, for us personally, I think the sport of basketball really does a great job of presenting that. So naturally, as game developers, we're excited about that and doing that for our game. What are the challenges of having been out of the game for a few years and, and having 2K so entrenched with gamers of bringing this brand back? It's a massive challenge. You know, I think the thing that we're going to focus on, and I think the thing that NBA Live and EA Sports has failed a little bit in the last couple of years, is a lot of talk, a lot of promises that were never fulfilled. So moving forward, we're not talking as much, we're delivering. So I'm talking to you here at E3 with a playable, although it's just one person because we're focusing on dribble, playable demo. We're going to continue to do that during the, during the course of the year, throughout the summer, and finally give you five-on-five -five gameplay that you can play before you purchase. So I think for us, it's about building credibility to our consumer, understanding our mistakes, being humble about that, knowing that we have failed, and then moving forward, being confident in what we're building, and really showing our consumer that it's okay to try this game and see what it's like before you end up buying it, because we're confident in what we're building now, and then moving forward. What's it been like working on the Xbox One and PS4? It's been great. You know, we have such a great partnership with both Microsoft and Sony. They're great partners for us providing us with insight into how the OSDKs are working, what the hardware is looking like, controllers, really provides us a great opportunity to really learn as we go along. So I think we're in a really good position building the Ignite engine for EA Sports is something that really came to be based on the partnership of what's going on on these Gen 4 titles, or sorry, Gen 4 hardware, giving us an understanding of what we need to build, the technology we need to have to ensure that our games are amazing at launch. So I think consumers, as you see here with what we're building, but also when we get to launch, we'll be very excited about what we'll have.